In this video I'd like to take a look at preparing an image for a large canvas wrap. In doing so we can also demonstrate how useful Photoshop's guides can be. A canvas wrap print is a great thing to do for the home because it's fairly cheap to get a large canvas wrap printed and stretched over a frame ready for hanging. They're easy to hang too because they're not heavy. Now when we're preparing a large canvas wrap we have to make allowance for the part of the image that's going to wrap around the wooden frame. That's the part we can see on the edge of the print. Now the print company will give you advice on how much you need to allow for this wrap but it's going to be around 40 or 50 millimeters especially if you're printing something about three foot long. My printer requires 50 millimeters we can allow part of the image like the one we're viewing here to wrap around the edge but that can adversely affect the image in some cases after all we're going to lose a hundred millimeter on the width and height and that can impact the composition another way we can do this is to add the 50 millimeter that we need to contain the wrap to the image size and then flood that with a neutral colour or one sampled from the image itself. That's quite a popular way to go. The third option is using Photoshop's Content Aware Fill and I think this may be the best way to go. Let's start with this monochrome and we can use part of the image for the wrap. I'd like to take you up to the top of the screen and open up the image and the image size window because we can see here that we've got a resolution of 300 pixels per inch and we've got an image which is around 22 inches by a little over 13 and if I change the measurement to centimeters which many people may be more familiar with you can see it's just under 56 and just under 34 I'm going to change this back to inches because that's what I'm more comfortable with now this image will actually print a lot bigger than we can see it here 22 by 13 and that's what I intend to do. Now perhaps we just need to bear in mind that when we view large prints when they're hanging on the wall we're generally viewing them from six to eight feet away certainly not close up and we also need to remember that the canvas wrap has a texture anyway and that's going to cover a multitude of sins. Now I want my canvas wrap to be 36 inches in width but that doesn't include the amount I need to leave for the wrap. So I'm going to increase the size to 40 inches which allows me my 50 millimeters left and right but it still leaves me with a front face of the wrap at 36 inches. When we adjust the size of an image for printing we have two options. I can leave the resample box ticked and just change the size in inches and allow Photoshop to add the pixels it needs to increase the size. Or I can untick the resample box. I could change my width to the 40 inches I mentioned a moment ago but you can see that the resolution drops to 165. For a canvas wrap 3 feet in length that's still going to be more than enough. But because it's a canvas wrap and because we're going to be looking at our image on a textured surface I think what I'll do is reset this. I'm touching my Alt key here and I'm going to reset it because I'm going to leave the resample box ticked. I'm going to keep the resolution at 300 but I'm going to put my width in at 40. Click OK. It's going to jump up on screen so I'll hit Control 0 to fit it back on screen so there's the first stage done. The next stage is to bring the rulers on screen. Now we can do that via the view menu at the top of the screen but there's a very quick and easy shortcut Control R for rulers. You can see them pop up around the outer edge of the image and if I hit Control R again it'll remove the rulers. So let's bring them back. 
But if I go up an inch of the rulers and right click, you can see I've got a number of different options here so I can change how the rulers measure. But in actual fact, I'm not going to use the rulers for measuring at all. I'll just hit Control Zero once again to fit that image back on screen after bringing the rulers on. I'm going to click within the rulers and I can drag out a guide. That's how we're going to set up the 50 millimeters around the edge of the image. Now I can move back to the guides at any time and move them around or I can shove them back in or I can get rid of them by going back to the view menu and we can clear the guides down here. So rather than using the rulers to measure, I think I've got a quicker and easier way. We're going to create a new canvas at 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. Doesn't matter what color it is, let's go to File New and do just that. There's one that I've made earlier, but if you didn't have one here, come over here, put your 50 millimeters in the width and the height. But the important factor here is you must have the same resolution here as you have in the image you're preparing for printing. Doesn't matter what color the background contents are, I'll create that. Looks rather large here, but if I go to the tab just up at the top left of the screen and drag it out, with the move tool, which I've selected from the top of the toolbox, I can click drag and drop. I don't need this now, so I can close it down. Now this little square, see those pink lines? We're going to look at those in a later video. That is 50 millimeters width and height. There's another option in Photoshop that's going to help us enormously here. If we go to the view menu, there it is, it's called snap. Let me demonstrate what it does. Most of the time you will never remove that tick. There are one or two jobs when you may need to, but they're rare. If I pick this up and move it up to the top left of my print here, you'll notice when I get close it'll snap into position almost as though it's magnetic. Now I can drag out a vertical guide and as I do so it'll snap to the edge of that 50 millimeter square. And if I drag out a horizontal one that'll do the same. Pick up the square and drag it down to the bottom corner and there it is snapping into place. Back over to the left, drag out the guide for the right hand side and then up to the top and drag out the final guide. There we have our 50 millimeter. I can drag this in the bin because I don't need it. We can now sit back and we can see which part of the image is going to wrap around the edge of the frame. Earlier on I was saying that sometimes when we use this method it can impact the composition and I suppose if we had an image where the content was more detailed and close to the edge it could cause a problem because as you know these areas are all going to be folded so when this image is on the wall you're hardly likely to see the top edge because it's going to be above your head. If you were standing slightly to the right you may see this one but then you wouldn't see this one and you may have difficulty even seeing the bottom one depending on the height the canvas is hung. But what I'd like to do just to demonstrate what I meant when I was talking about interfering with the composition is if I pick up my crop tool here I can actually crop and you will notice that even the crop look snaps to the guides which is quite useful but I only want to put it in place there so I can demonstrate that I have actually lost a little bit of composition particularly with that top third line and maybe the horizon. Now it could be important but sometimes it's not going to make much difference so I'll back away from this, select my move tool there's our canvas wrap or it certainly will be when it's printed so all we've got to do now is to save this image as a JPEG if you are going to save it as a JPEG make sure you save it as level 12 but you can save it as a Photoshop file or a TIFF file any printers worth their salt should be able to open any file that you take to them 
Now let's take a look at the other option I mentioned earlier where we can add the 50 millimeters to the canvas all around the edge and then we can flood that with a neutral color or we can clone a color from the image. So I'll bring up a different image just so we've got something different to look at. So with a different image on screen let's take a look at that second technique. I'm going to begin by removing the lock to the right of the layer thumbnail. That just separates the image from the canvas beneath as you can see. And as I drag this back that snap command will work here too. See it snap into place? Very convenient. The next job then is to decide the size I'm going to print my canvas. So image, image size. What I'll do here I think is much the same as I did before. I'm going to leave the resample box ticked. I'm going to stay with the 300 pixels per inch. But I'm going to increase this to, let's say, I'm going to push this. I'm going to go to 40. And this one is slightly smaller than the previous I think, but it's going to work fine. Let's click OK to that. Once Photoshop's done its work, I'll hit Control Zero. Because now, we don't need that little square to help us mark out the 50 millimeters. We can just add it to the canvas. So let's go up to the image menu, top left of the screen, and choose canvas size. I've got millimeters already set here, so I need to put 100 in there, and 100 in the height. Because don't forget, with the anchor point in the middle, Photoshop's going to put 50 millimeters left, right, top, and bottom. Click OK, hit Control Zero. There you can see very much what we saw with the previous image. If I go to my layers now, I can go to the bottom just next to the bin and create a new blank layer. And I can drag that beneath the image because I can flood that with color to create the edge effect that I want. I'm going to pick a color from the image, I think. So I'm going to pick up my eyedropper tool. I'm using a 5x5 five five average, and I want something quite dark. I think I'll pick something like that, the sky, and then use Alt Backspace to flood it. And I think we could possibly live with that. But if we wanted it slightly darker or lighter, well, we've looked at this before, I think. If you bring up your levels, Control L is the shortcut key, you've got the opportunity to make the changes you need to make. As you can see by the spinning round of the screen, I've opened up a different image. No real reason to do that, as I often say, but it gives us something different to look at. I've opened the image, removed the lock the same as before, Increase the size to the print size that I require, and I've added 50 millimeters all the way around. The difference here is we're going to ask Photoshop via Content Aware Fill to fill in the areas around the edge. I'm going to put the guides back in place. They're not essential for this, but I want them there to show you something once this is complete. So I'm going to drag one out for the left side, one for the right, one for the top and you can see how he easy this is when it snaps to the edge of the image but it's not essential to do what I'm about to do which is to select my rectangular marquee tool go to the top right of that canvas click and drag I just want to overlap a tiny amount just a little bit here then I'm gonna go up to my edit menu and I'm going to choose, I'm going to keep this simple because you can see we've got a content aware fill there. It does the same thing but in a more controllable way. We don't actually need the complexities of that. So I'm going to go to just fill. Take a note of the shortcut key is Shift F5. From the contents here, if you don't have content aware selected, select it from the drop down list. Click OK and allow Photoshop. To do its work and as soon as it does I'll hit Control Z to remove that selection and I'm pretty confident it'll do a darn good job 
So let's have a go next at the area on the left. I'm going to bring the size of my image down a little bit with shortcut keys, Control Alt Spacebar. Just drop it away from the edge there so I've got a bit more room to maneuver around here. I just want to click and drag and as you can see I'm going to select the whole area there. I can nudge that selection to the left a little bit with the cursor control keys if I want to. I can do this even quicker though. Remember we saw the shortcut keys to bring up that fill was Shift F5 and then we don't need to use our cursor to hit the OK button, we could hit the Enter key and Photoshop is already busy at work. Once it's complete I'll hit Ctrl D, that doesn't look too bad. Let's try the right hand side and we'll do the same thing. Just nudge it a little bit, Shift F5, Enter. See how these things get quite quick to do? Even though we're asking Photoshop to do some complex work, we can have it running in seconds. Control D will remove that selection. And finally, the last one, the entire base. I'll nudge that one down just a little bit. Again, Shift F5, Enter, and then those few seconds of patience until we see the effect and that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to hit Control D to remove that selection. Even with those guides in place I think we would be more than happy with that. And of course what we've done is retain the entire image that we first created within those guides and the 50 millimeters all around has been created by the wonders of Photoshop. Now the reason I put those guides in place was because sometimes I found the need to darken down the edge that's going to form the wrap. If we want to do that, if we go up to the rectangular marquee tool and select that, we can click and drag and because we've got the snap command on, the selection will snap to the guides pretty quick and easy but I really need not the center selected but everything but the center we can achieve that by going to select inverse there's just the outer edge so we can always do this with our levels now our levels can be found in the image menu but it's another one that's got a pretty quick and easy shortcut control L so I could decide to darken down the outer edges I can click OK to that, but of course I'm not too keen on the fact that it's impacted on the color. But I can fix that too, because if I went back to my image menu, I could choose my hue and saturation, Control U, and I could just drop down the saturation so I've got the best of all worlds. Now what I'll do here is hit Control D to remove that selection, View, to remove those guides and there once again our canvas would be ready to send to the printers or our print would to be made into a canvas.